the best discipline you can do, the best protection for your life, the best protection for the people you say you love, is a disciplined life. Because if you don't get disciplined and you let everybody you care about turn your head, Satan will harass your family to death just to keep you off course. The best thing you can do for them is get disciplined and not let them affect you. Because the second he finds out my wife is so dear to me every time he attacks her, that poor soul will never get out from under attack. The worst thing I can do is let his attack against her affect my commitment to him. Because all it's going to do is open up her, her to things that they'll attack her till she's dead if it keeps me off course. The best thing you can do for your loved ones is get disciplined. I hope to God you heard that. Amen. Some fell on good ground, produced 30, 60, and 100 fold. Explain that to us, Jesus. Now listen to verse 11. Remember, mysteries, revelations, and parables aren't to hide things from you. It's to hide from the lazy. They're hidden for the hungry. Amen. Say, parables are for God's kingdom to be hid for me. Parables are for God's kingdom to be hid for me. If I'm hungry, it's for me. Amen? And he said, verse 11, Unto you it is given to know. He just answered that right there. The circle that followed him, not the masses. It's for you to understand this. For them, it's hidden in a parable. It's given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them, the masses he just walked away from, that are without all these things are done in parables. That's the purpose of a parable. Hidden for the hungry, hidden from the lazy. Amen? Well, I thought Jesus just exposed all the kingdom to everybody. No, he doesn't. That's because you listen to a wrong preacher. He just, the Lord just said that in red. What are his teachings for? They're disguised in parables to hide them from the lazy, reveal them to the hungry. Well, I don't get nothing out of the Bible. I'm lazy. Folks, you can diagnose people in a second just by what comes out of their mouth. Amen. Well, I read the Bible. I didn't get anything. Well, how many times did you hit it, champion? Well, I read it three times. The whole Bible? No, parts. What meant they put, invested a whole 15 minutes in it, threw it on the shelf, say, I don't understand that stuff, and went on their happy life. Come That's not hungry in God's eyes. Amen. Amen? But unto those that are outside, all these things are done in parables. Because seeing, they may see and not perceive. Hearing, they may hear and not understand. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven. In other words, nothing changes till you get a hungry heart. You don't even get saved till you get serious. Amen. Boy, that's good. Amen. Now listen to this. And he said unto them, Wow, if you're ever going to underline, well, I don't believe in writing in my Bible, writing it now. Underline this next verse, verse 13. This is why this is one of the main teachings I've, I've started every church I've pioneered with. We don't go forward till everybody understands Mark chapter 4. Because this, this one teaching answers every spiritual question that's ever going to pop up in your life. Watch. Know you not this parable? Christopher, don't you understand this story I just told you? Well, no, Lord. Then how are you going to understand all my teachings? Every teaching he taught, the key to understanding it is understanding this first. Know you not this parable? Then how will you understand all parables? The you understanding any teaching of the Lord is the key to it is understanding this first. And most people have never heard a teaching of Mark 4 and think they know. Why do things happen to good people? Why do some people get ahead and others don't? Why does every time I start going on with God, everything goes to hell in my life? Everything's answered right here. To keep you from being fruitful. To keep you from being fruitful. 
to keep you from freely. Just being saved is not the issue with God and not the issue with the devil. Focus is. What would happen, how many churches would we have if, well, I'm saved, <laughs> the hell with everybody else, and I never answered the call of a pastor. I never raised up eight churches. I never won hundreds of people to Jesus. What was the point of it? The purpose of your life is focus for fruit. Amen. For a harvest, 30, 60, and 100. 30, 60, and 100. Every one of you ought to lead at least 30, at the least 30 people to Jesus before you leave. Know you not this parable? How then will you know all parables? Now he's going to explain it word for word. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you interested? Would you like to know how to understand all kingdom mysteries? Here we go. Are you ready? The sower is sowing the word. When I'm preaching to you, what am I doing? I'm taking God's sack of spiritual seed and throwing it into your hearts. And guess what? You can sit in happy church all you want. Doesn't mean a thing if you don't get this. I'm sowing seed. Right now, I'm sowing spiritual kingdom seed. That's, she's got, she got it already. Now watch. The sower is sowing the word. Not a opinion, not a feeling. The word. If it's not the word, it's not spiritual seed. Amen. At least not kingdom spiritual seed. Amen. 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 And these are they by the wayside. Now he's explaining what you should have underlined in the other column. The wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard what? Satan comes immediately to steal. You say, I'm going to serve God? Well, how come all hell broke loose? That's how the kingdoms work. The kingdom of light comes, the kingdom of darkness comes. Why do good things happen to, bad things happen to good people? Because they thought they decided to start following God. So bad came immediately. That's why most people can't go to church three weeks in a freaking row. Amen. Stuff pops up. Focus is turned. The kingdom is lost. And I'm not talking about Teresa because her job is... But I'm talking about the people that can, but stuff pops up. You've heard this a hundred times. I meant it. And, and, and you need to get it. And I'm not saying for you to do it. I'm just telling you me. I can't be a pastor if whenever my job says, well, we need you Sunday. And you show up, and I was just called in at five minutes before church time to go to work. After all, it's my job. I'd never be a pastor. You'd never have a church. Somebody's got to start living by this. And you don't, trust me, you don't pay enough for me to do this full time, at even close. I have to work to be here for you. But I told them, the first day you make me work a Sunday, I quit. And I'm 66 years old, and they know to this day, I still mean it. I'll start all over again. You will not stop God's purpose in my life. And amazing, in 10 years, they've never had the need to call me in one time. Satan's crept into those shallow areas because they're invited. Yeah, it got quiet in here, didn't it? And I need an income just as equally as you need one. I have to eat food just like you do. I got people I love and care about to supply for it just like you do. What's the difference? Heart, focus, determination. I'm not bending. That's, all, that's the only difference. If I came home next week and said, darling, the... Got to find a new job. They fired me because I said no to work on Sundays. Do you think she would be thrilled? She'd be as thrilled as she is spiritual. Well, praise God. God gave you that job. He'll give you another one. Hallelujah. We turn it over to you, Jesus. Not, probably not going to happen, but that should be the right answer. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. 
We are so carnally manipulated and so easily turned. It's amazing God gets anything done. And I'm not pointing a finger at anybody. I'm just using me as an example. This is real or it's not. It's real easy to say I'm a faith person. Are you really? It's real easy to say I'm following Jesus with everybody else at the same level that has no intention of going on beyond where you're at. I'm telling you how Satan conquers you and how God's kingdom manifests in you. There's no exceptions. No man is even fit. God won't even start building with this. What what did I miss? What's going on? He won't even build on it. Forget it. Satan's number one tool against you is lack of discipline and losing your focus. No matter how, what, or who is able to make that focus change. Boy, that's good. I hope you get this. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown, and when they have heard the word, Satan comes. When? How soon does he come? Before you even get to the parking lot and get in your car, he's going to start working on you. That's why you can feel real good at church, and then by the time middle week, (laughs) because you lost your focus. Because he comes immediately to start digging up what was planted in you at all, if you got anything in a 30-minute church service. Amen? Amen. Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their, what? Underlying heart. So now he's explained what the soil is. Good ground, bad ground, thorny ground is what? Heart attitude. Amen? wonder what it means by soil. It's your heart attitude. He just explained it. Amen? And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard, here's the seed, the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Oh, praise God, that's exciting, because I give my heart to Jesus, and I'm going to have a, a big house and a boat and a car, and wow, praise the Lord. And they have no root in themselves, they're shallow people, and so they endure following with God for just a short time. Afterward, when they walk out and get in the parking lot, afflictions or persecutions arise. Why do bad things happen to good people? Because you went to church. You made a decision to hear the word. And the battle is not about you. You're not that special. The battle is about the word in you, never allowing you to have a fruitful life. You think it's personal. It's just that you never fully let God be God in you. You're a vessel. The battle's over the word. It's the word that creates the kingdom. It's the kingdom that put its foot on Satan's head. He doesn't want you growing with the kingdom of God and the fullness of Christ. And if he can cut you out as soon as you heard it, oh, praise God, and immediately start beating your brains out, you'll never be around to grow and produce. I'm explaining everything that happens in your life right here. The battle's over what? Well, the devil hates me. You're not even, the only thing he hates about you is just like, I hate guns because there's bullets in guns. And bullets will kill you. So if I get rid of the gun, I don't got to worry about the bullet. I don't have to worry about getting shot. So if he can get rid of you, he gets rid of the word. He doesn't have to worry about the kingdom showing up. You're just the vessel of God. Or you're the vessel of hell. Or you're the vessel of self, which is still the same thing. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. 
They receive it with gladness, but they have no root in themselves, and they only endure for a little while, because as soon as they hear it, affliction and persecution arises for the word's sake. It's after the word. And immediately they are offended. How many times do you hear people in church, that, that preacher offends me. That's offensive. I don't like that. That offends me. It offends me. It offends me. What, what are they saying? I'm stony ground, stony ground, stony ground, stony ground. My heart's hard, heart hard, heart hard. It's all about me. Somebody say hallelujah. That's excellent preaching. Verse 18, and these are they which are sown among thorns. As, now the thorns is what? Heart attitude. Such as hear the word. Now, what's the key through all these people? They all heard the Bible preached. All of them got different results based on different heart attitudes. It's not changing the preacher, it's changing the heart. It's not changing the building, it's changing the heart. It's not having light shows and smoke screens, it's changing the heart. Well, if I go to that church, then I really grow. No, you won't. You're just appeasing what you already want. Go where God sent you. Apostolic order. Where am I sent of God to position myself? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are they which are sown on, among thorns, which hear the word. Say, we all heard it. Yeah. And the cares of the world. Now, make a note of this. Most of the things that defeat Christians aren't even directly sins. I'm watching out for adultery. I'm watching out for fornication. I'm watching out for pornography. I'm watching out for, for hatred in my heart. Those are all bad. And they'll all still God out of your heart and they'll all send you to hell if you don't repent. But that's not even what he's talking about here. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is going to blow you away. And the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, well, yeah, those prosperity preachers, I am a prosperity preacher. Anybody who can read this Bible and tell you that God doesn't want to prosper you, succeed at every goal in life is what prosperity means. To succeed at a given appointed goal. That's the name of prosperity. When I'm perfectly healthy, I'm physically prosperous. When I'm emotionally healthy and I don't have demons rattling around in my head, I'm psychologically prosperous. When I'm spiritually healthy, I'm bearing fruit and prospering in the spirit realm. When I'm financially prospering, I have more than enough succeeding at a specific goal. Prosperity is not a cuss word. It's a Bible principle. God would be a prosperity preacher. Why? Because he's got the audacity to believe when I preach the word, I get back 30, 60, or 100 times more than I sowed. That's called prosperity. I am a prosperity preacher. I just don't pursue money. Hallelujah. I pursue Him. The cares of the world, deceit, three categories, underline cares of the world, underline deceitfulness of riches. Well, I can't lose my job. That's where my money comes from. That's a lie. It's called deceitful. And the lust of other things. Things that you make as important to God is what that means. Things that you make equal in importance as God. That's what that means. Lust of other things. Enter in where? My heart. And choke out the word and it becomes, what's the goal? Unfruitful. So the goal for God in your life is God wants fruit out of your life. The reason he plants the seed is produce kingdom fruit. The reason Satan attacks you, cares of the world, deceitfulness of riches, and lust of other things, is to keep you from living for him, producing for him. Amen. He can do it as something as simple as, well, we can't go to church because Little League started and we got to make sure Elmer doesn't lose his spot on the team. Lust of other things. It didn't say adultery pornography. It just said other things. On, things that you have never even been taught is sin. If it stops you and God, it's a sin. 
deceitfulness of riches. I, had, I got hired on a police department that threatened me. Well, we heard you're a Jesus freak and, and you're toting the Bible and we don't want none of that around there. Well, God attacked them, called me back the next day and said, well, come in and talk to us. Long story short, I've told him many times, the chief took a badge and a gun out, threw it across his desk at me, said, I don't know why I'm doing this. I did. He said, start Monday. But don't be preaching around here. It was a 32-man department. I, while I was there, I led 70-some-odd people to Jesus. As they came and went, they all got saved. Amen. What did I do? Exactly what God told me to do, not what they were going to dictate. We'll keep back your riches. No, you can't keep back my riches. Me not obeying and staying focused keeps back my riches. Cares of the world. Just go down the line. Anything that the world has that causes you to stop going forward with God, there you go. And it doesn't have to be any of the big ten. Make you completely unfruitful for God. Why does God stir up your employers? Why do people at work pick on you? Why do bad things happen like car wrecks? Why, why, why? Anything that can move you and does move you is invited now to make sure it keeps moving you until you stop it from moving you. So the worst thing you can do is give attention to what's trying to move you. Luke chapter 10, we'll close with this. Now folks, there's enough revelation in this teaching to absolutely transform your Christian life. And it's absolutely needed because what's it all about in this last day? The harvest of being fruitful to win souls. That's why Terry's coming. Amen. 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 Luke chapter 10, look at verse 38. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard the word, was getting seed sown into her heart. But Martha was cumbered about in the kitchen with much serving. Well, we got people over. I can't sit and listen to Jesus preach. I got to go in the kitchen and make stuff for them to eat and stuff for them to drink. And I got to make sure they, they think I'm a good host. And everybody look at Pastor. Everybody look up here. The number one thing Satan's going to do to you when you start serving God, well, how come nobody's helping me? I'm trying to serve God. Everybody else is just sitting and going to church. Don't nobody else care about being a servant of God? It's not about anybody else. It's about you. Don't you worry about who's going on further with God with you or who's here to clean the church. I'm the only one who cleans the church. It's not about them. It's about you. Your heart, your service, your focus. I don't care who falls, who stays, who sticks, who runs, who comes. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be right here preaching. It's about me, my heart, my focus, my call, my reason. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she had a sister called Mary which said of Jesus' feet, but Martha was cumbered about with much serving. She was really working hard. And came to him right in the middle of his message, mind you. See, when people are consumed with themselves, they'll interrupt God. Came to him and said, Lord, excuse me, I know you were on chapter 3, but listen. What's with Mary? See, see how Marys are? That's how Marys are. Listen to this. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all this preparation of food and, and stuff for you alone? Tell her to get in the kitchen and help me. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Boy, when mom used to repeat my name twice, I was in trouble. When Jesus looks at you and says, Christopher, Christopher, you better be listening. Thou art, you're, you're, what, what creeps into cares of the world? Cares of the world. 
Thou art careful and troubled about many things. But the one thing, say one thing. One thing. The one thing, say it again. One thing. There's one thing needful. Say it again. One thing needful. Say it again. One thing needful. I need a job. There's one thing needful. I need a husband. There's one thing needful. I need a safe place. There's one thing needful. Not that and that. That's double-minded. Not that and that. That's cross-eyed. Not that and that. That's wicker. Not that and that. That's wax-covered. There's one thing in God's opinion that's needful. And Mary has chosen that one thing. To listen to the Word and obey it. Yeah, but what spirit is that? The goat spirit. Somebody was listening. But one thing is needful, Mary, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken from her. Houses, dishes, jobs, family, friends can all be wiped out. The word can't. The word won't. Everything will fail you except this. This seems to fail you because you're cross-eyed. You're looking at this and relatives. You're looking at this and the job. You're looking at this and career. You're looking at this and acceptance. There's one thing you need. This in your heart. A good attitude toward it. And never get your focus on anything else. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a big hand clap. Hallelujah.